When my sister and I were kids, we shared a passion for one thing, Legos. I started building a few years earlier than my sister with Lincoln Logs and Tinker Toys, if some of you remember those. But when Legos came along, it was a major revelation. It made those other things look like rocks and a chisel. Legos were, and still are in my opinion, the ultimate building blocks. And the two of us would sit for hours on end, dreaming, inventing, and constructing anything our imagination could conjure up. Houses, castles, spaceships, hovercrafts, entire cityscapes. The only limitation was the amount of Legos we had to work with. And oftentimes the supply of building blocks ran short of our ambition, which led us to buying even more Legos in order to complete a project. We loved Legos so much that we continued to play with them even after we became teenagers. And when my sister started babysitting, Legos became her favorite babysitting tool. She brought them with her to every household she went, introducing yet another generation to these marvelous blocks of imagination. I must confess that even as an adult, I've bought a few Lego kits, including Frank Lloyd Wright's Guggenheim Museum, and I sat down and put it together with the enthusiasm of a seven-year-old. I guess you're never too old for Legos. However, the hardest part of owning them is the deconstruction process. No matter how proud we are of what we've built, no matter how sturdy our eternal creations may seem, Legos eventually have to be dismantled if we ever want to create something new. Brick by brick, they have to be taken apart so that a new creation can arise from the pile of various Lego pieces. And this can be a difficult and sometimes painful process. As a child, I almost felt like having a funeral to say goodbye to my latest Lego creation. But then the excitement of birthing something new again would take over, and I could not wait to see where my imagination would take me. In this morning's gospel lesson, Jesus makes a disturbing prediction. Luke says that some people were admiring the temple in Jerusalem. They marveled at the beautiful stonework and how it was decorated with special memorial projects that were dedicated to the glory of God. It was indeed a fitting house for God's people where they could worship God and feel closer to the holy. The temple in Jerusalem seemed as solid and permanent as the God they worshipped. And while they marveled at its beauty, Jesus said, As for these things that you see, the days will come when not one stone will be left upon another. All will be thrown down. And I can imagine the look of shock and dismay on their faces. Jesus, how can you be serious? This temple took several lifetimes to complete. It's not going anywhere. Little did they know that nearly 40 years later, the temple would be destroyed by the Romans. Nearly every stone was dismantled, like the Lego projects I constructed as a kid. The only thing left of the temple to this very day is the Temple Mount, which contains what is known as the Wailing Wall or the Western Wall, where people still go to pray and leave messages to God in the crevices between the stones. But on the day when Jesus made this prediction, the idea that the temple would be destroyed would be completely and utterly unimaginable. And in the words that follow Jesus' dire prediction, he seemed to indicate that nothing of this world is permanent. Temples of all sorts will come tumbling to the ground, be they the temple in Jerusalem or the World Trade Center in New York City. Nations will continue to rise up against other nations in various places throughout the globe. Natural disasters will claim lives and property in random, unexpected places. Famines and disease will take their toll on individuals and communities. Family members will turn against each other and violate sacred bonds of trust and safety. And in the midst of all this turmoil and uncertainty, there is only one thing that remains standing, and that, of course, is God. God is the only thing that is lasting and eternal. And if we place our trust in God, rather than governments, stock portfolios, church buildings, and the like, not a hair of our heads will perish. By trusting in God, we will gain everlasting life. And this is a hard message for us to hear because we do not like things to change. Amen? We don't like to hear that things are going to crumble to the ground. 
Our bodies are going to wear out and decay. Whatever monuments we've constructed in our lifetimes, even the church building we built together, will eventually lie in rubble. And these are hard things for us to hear. And the words of the prophet Isaiah from our first lesson offer us little comfort as well. Isaiah says, For I am about to create new heavens and a new earth. The former things shall not be remembered or come to mind. Seriously, Isaiah, can't you give us a break? The world around us is changing at such a rapid pace. At such a rapid pace. Can't things just stay the same? Can't we stop the merry-go-round for just a minute? One of my observations about the life in the church is that the church always likes to talk about things being made new. We think that maybe by talking about it long enough, we might actually believe it's true. We love the psalm that says, sing to the Lord a new song, but wow, we really delude ourselves. Churches really, if ever, like to talk about doing new things. Now, abiding Savior may be an exception to this rule, but even we like a little bit of stability and consistency, especially after the numerous changes we've made during the pandemic, as well as going through a volatile political system. Sing to the Lord a new song? No thank you. The old song suits us just fine. Can't we just have a little bit of stability for just a moment so we can catch our breaths and rest a little bit? Make no mistake about it, all things made new is one of the most unsettling things Isaiah could have said to us, especially when it comes to the church and the way we worship. Every single one of us, whether we're liberal or conservative, young or old, whether we like traditional or contemporary worship, we all have a clear image in our minds of what church and spirituality are supposed to be like. And believe me, we are resistant for that image to change. And this unchanging image is what we inwardly long for when we show up Sunday after Sunday in worship. This image may be what we remember from our childhood, but it's that image more often than not which prevents us from experiencing God more deeply. A pastor I heard once said it well, Do you want to know what prevents people from experiencing God the most? The biggest obstacle in the way of us experiencing God is whatever our last experience of God was. Let me repeat that for you again. The biggest obstacle in the way of us experiencing God is whatever our last experience of God was. Our last experience, whatever it was, was so wonderful and refreshing and renewing that we inevitably believe that every future experience will have to be exactly like that. But guess what? It won't be. New heavens and new earths don't seem so great when we admire the large stones of the temples we built around us. And all of us have some sort of temple that we admire. It might be a literal church building. It might be those Lego projects I loved as a kid. It might be that special place we escape for refuge and respite. But that temple might also be our job, our company, our family that we've built up over years of hard work. And we're very proud of what we've accomplished. Every one of these temples is going to change. It's going to be made new one day, and we hate to see them fall. The truth of the matter, whether we like it or not, is that all things are being made new all the time, if we are paying attention. And there is only thing we can count on that will never wither or decay, and that is our relationship with God, as experienced through the living Christ, and fueled by the love and wisdom of the Holy Spirit. And this is what I think Jesus was trying to get at when he made the prediction about the temple in our gospel lesson for today. People often put their faith in buildings, in church programs, in worship books, in ways of doing ministry. But the truth of the matter is that all of these things are temporary. The church of Jesus Christ looks a lot different now than it did during the time of those first Christian believers than it did during the time of the Protestant Reformation, than it did during the 1950s. And it will look a whole lot different 50 years from now. And in the midst of all these changes, where buildings and way of doing things will be dismantled and rebuilt time and time again, we have a choice. We can become anxious and fearful. 
Or we can focus on the one who never changes, who is the glue that holds the church together, who promises that he will never leave us nor forsake us. Jesus is the only temple that can never be destroyed. Not even the grave was able to silence him. Therefore, in the midst of all the changes of our lives, may we keep our eyes on Jesus, who promises us that we will endure. We will not be lost amidst the rubble and decay. Christ is for us, and if Christ is for us, who or what can truly be against us? Amen.